you got into this business for the money and the fame and, and the fame <laughs> like you're just you know, you're you're man you're you're going to be a one percenter if you make it hey welcome back to the most electrifying podcast sports entertainment undefeated with michael montgomery and i am michael montgomery some people call me money mike some people call me mr Thanks thanksgiving because i make sure everybody eats Sitting down with real people, with real conversation, for real results. I got a new nickname. I like to call myself the Will Smith of podcasting. You know, my, you know, ducking the Jada negativity, you know. So I got a great guest, you know, the underground king of indie films. You like that, don't you? I love it. <laughs> and then, uh, so one, I want to make sure I get this right, one, Vasquez, yeah. Vasquez. Juan, Juan, Juan C. Vasquez, you know, what I what I go by, the brand is Juan C. Vasquez. Oh, perfect, perfect, man. And I'm just honored, a Packers enthusi enthusiastic. Big so, time, big time. So tell us, tell us for the people who don't know, tell us a little about a little bit about yourself, where you came from, and your uh, upbringings and family. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, my, my mother, um, you know, she was born in Texas. My father was born in Puerto Rico. They met in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, and you know, I grew up there, so it was like, you know, we were one of the first Mexican families up there. So, mm -hmm. you know, I experienced a lot up there and, uh, definitely grew up a big, big Packer fan and just kind of always gravitated to, uh, making films. I mean, I remember my first film when I was in high school, you know, I got all the, the buddies together and somebody had a camcorder and da da da. Somehow we made our first film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. So, and, and you said you grew up, and when we talked about it, and you said you was a super big Packers fan, big and you time. had to suffer through the the eighties before Brett Favre came out. You know, I I and I got a lot of like, you know, I got a lot of friends that are Bears fans, and a lot of friends that are Cowboys fans. Yeah. So you know, I love these times right now. I mm. love them, you know, because the in the eighties, man, it was so bad, bro. Like, I mean, you know, it's just we'd be lucky to win two, three games. And then, you know, the, the Brett Favre era came in, and then you came in with the Aaron Rodgers era. And, like, mm -hmm. I got Bears fans, you know, they're like, how do you guys go from one Hall of Fame quarterback to another one? <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's true because we just, it's just having that stability. That's why, like, you know, I, I don't got a problem with the Jordan Love pick because you got you got to be thinking about the future always. Mm -hmm, always. And, and, and when I think about it, you know, I got drafted with Aaron Rodgers in 2005. And the reset back the time, Aaron Rodgers was the first round draft pick to Brett Favre. Yeah. So, you know, it's just how time recycles it, recycles exactly. itself. So, exactly. it was uh, just a great. So, the hunger you you talked about the hunger for film. How did that come about? Was it just something you just saw after, or was some friends who just jumped you into the, doing the film? What what sparked the hunger for film? You know, I've always been just a creative person, and you know, come up with a story, a writer, and whatnot, and then. Uh, you know, growing up, um, you know, in Milwaukee, I, I was I was privileged. Some of my aunts worked at the first video store in the city, so you're talking about you know I'm in you know grade school. I'm walking through the aisles, man. You know, you and me in the blockbuster days. This is the first indie uh, video stores, Beta, VHS, and you know I could walk through these these aisles at the at the at, at the video store, looking at the covers, mm -hmm. get an idea of you know. So so I had you know a lot of that. Like kids today. They don't got that. <laughs> when you, when you, you know, when you really want to talk about, like, you know, you want to be me or be the next, you know, Juan C. Vasquez, et cetera, the next Quentin Tarantino, he had the same experience. He worked at a video store. So, like, that's, you know, that that's what really sparks those those juices. And it's unfortunate because, you know, but with that blockbuster era should have never went away. And people people don't understand what, we, what we're giving away. Exactly, exactly. And one thing um, I loved about film, you know, I grew up small town country guy. You know, it gave me the the ability to believe. You know, believe there's something bigger than myself that I can achieve. What, um, when it comes to film and stories you tell, what what do you want to like inspire people to do? Write your own story. You know, be original. the 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 thing that annoys me the most about, and I'm going to call them wannabe filmmakers, um, is the, the first thing they always tell me is, I want to make this, that, and like, and it's, I want to make another Friday, another, you know, man, you know, I made Through the Valley, I made Trap Plane, I made, you know, Sponsors, mm -hmm. this new one, The Squad, there's no, you know, there's elements I draw from, obviously, because there's nothing new under the sun, mm -hmm. we draw from different things, and we pull it all together, but, you know, it's, you know, be original, come up, come up with something new, you know, I mean, yeah, you can say, hey, I drew from 
uh, Friday, but don't not have an idea and say, this is my idea, and, you know, expect to be taken serious. Yeah, because yeah, oftentimes you see when, when films come out, you see the the other films, there's just similar, like Shark versus uh, Alligator or Shark versus just... Yeah, it was Sharknado. Yeah, yeah, just recycle <laughs> movies all over again. So uh, and, and they can't even tell you, like, the original ones, like Piranha, like, you know, those uh, Roger Corman films. Like, you know, he was he was the real king of uh, indie film back in the day. And, not, and you know, and that was because... You know, at that time, it was just quantity, you know, not quality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that that was that was the difference. But a lot of the big uh, directors like Martin Scorsese all got their start through. Exactly. And you said the king of indie film. What originated the title and what made you saw yourself as, as the? Well, you know, you, it, it, it's it's like this when you're when you're a, a filmmaker, it's just like rappers. You got to have a brand like what do you you know, what do you what are you talking about? What separates you? So it's just like you as a defensive end in the NFL, you got statistics, you got stats, you got different things that you do. You got hurries, right? You got mm -hmm. sacks, you got tackles. With us in film, okay, I'm a writer, director, producer, actor, five of those. You get into those categories, the, the herd gets thinner by three. By four, and then you get to five and there's really nobody else there with that many credentials, quality, you know, and, and, and the different things. So you, you have to you have to put a value on yourself and your art or nobody else will. Mm, that's, that's what's up. So when when you started, you know, you say you wear the multiple hats. And I want to talk about Through the Valley, you yeah. know, how did every and everybody talks about it, you know, raising money for a film, you know, directing, producing. How did that come about with bu budget raising money for the film and also acquiring, you know, major talent? in the film to uh, produce it. We always know about the writing, but everybody talks about how to raise money and how to acquire talent. So how, how did that come about for the, for your film, uh, through, through the Valley? Well, yeah, through the Valley is a, an amazing film. I mean, that was a pinnacle at the time of my life. Cause I, that was, you know, I set these goals, you know, and when you accomplish your goals, it's like, you know, it, it, it's what it meant to you. Like, I'm sure like you, like when your goal is, hey, I want to make it to the NFL. So, you mm -hmm. know, you got there. That's a major goal. Then you probably said, hey, I want to win a Super Bowl. And you get, mm -hmm. you know, it's like you set the next goal. Yeah. That goal took a long time to get to. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah, because a know. lot of people don't don't <laughs> see that. They always see the end product, but they don't know, how, you know, the time that puts in to develop this project. Yeah, absolutely. And so the script, I want to say I wrote the script in 2001. And I was out in Los Angeles pitching it. I was at Emilio Rivera's uh, birthday party. Uh, Emilio Rivera, Mayans, you know, big time actor. Um, and uh, I met Noel G, Training Day, Fast and the Furious. And I was telling them, and they all loved it. Mm -hmm. They all loved it. And, you know, they wanted to be a part of it. And like, so, you know, I I've always had that, that ability to come up with something captivating. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, that it took... It wasn't until 2005, and I was living in Houston, that I pulled the trigger to start producing the film because I got tired of, you know, you talk about looking for money. You realize, listen, if you want to get it done, you got to come up with your own money, or you got to have access to money or make money, and then and then you'll attract money. Mm -hmm. A lot of these filmmakers, everybody thinks, you know, they're going to be the lucky one. I'm just pretty face. I'm gonna walk in this door, you know, money Mike, he's gonna just give me that money and you know, I'm gonna make the next Friday. You yeah. know, and you know, it, it is what it is, man. Delusion is everywhere. You know, the the reality is 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 concrete, it's brick. You gotta build, you know, you gotta have that real structure and substance and how you gotta create it yourself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with me, I just took my time and then I, you know, I, I mean I work jobs, I have developed money and then I started, you know, you know, just networking with people, getting ready to make this big project. And then, you know, I, I ended up, um, you know, attracting more money once I started on it. And mm -hmm. I, you know, um, I ended up casting in the first film. I didn't know it, man. I did my own casting. I cast a multimillionaire in my first film, and he ended up putting more money into the project. Oh, man. And then, you know, when we got Danny Trejo, I mean, I'm 28 years old directing Danny Trejo. <laughs> I know some major actors in the game. There, there was a point on the set when he's like, hey, 
Mr. Director, what, what, what do you want? And, and, what do you, you need? Any direct? I go, uh, Danny, you're doing great. Just, just keep doing. What you're doing. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just like, what the hell do you tell this guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You give him, you give him any uh, coaching. You like, you know, no, you need to do this better. No, 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 no. You just, just be here. Well, you know, especially fun. at that time with him, you know, it, it's a look, it's a character. I mean, it's just second nature to him to be able to pull that off. So I wasn't I wasn't asking him to do anything too dynamic at that time, you know. Now, you know, I definitely would would have stretched it and moved the boundaries. But, you know, I'm doing that in, in all my other films. But it, it, on that first go around, it was literally, you know, you're you're working with a legend, <laughs> and mm -hmm. you know. And I had kind of an ensemble of great talent, but you know, when it was just it was it was it was so electric, you know, at that time because that was literally before he did Machete, mm -hmm. and a lot of the themes from my film ended up in Machete. You know, we, we we sold so many copies of Through the Valley out, like, out of the trunk. I think I might hold the record for most copies of a movie sold out of the trunk. Wow. Yeah. Man, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. And just acquiring the talent. So that so you're saying you just, you put faith, you took a le leap of faith, you worked your butt off, and then as you was working towards the production, people just start gravitating to you and building you up to, to see that production go through. Yeah, absolutely. It's momentum, you know. People will invest in people that will invest themselves. So, mm -hmm. you know, like I look at somebody, if you won't invest in yourself, why would I invest in you? So when people see you investing in you, seeing results and seeing the action that you're, that you're creating an energy and a wave and a momentum where people want to be a part of that, I mean, it, it's just like, you know, you know yourself, like you're, 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 you can't beat that guy, you better yeah. join him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and, and that's amazing. So it, through the valley... And I want to jump to award-winning trap planes. How did the concept come about? Oh, yeah, before I get to that, we talked about writing, developing. How did that come about? Did you, did you go to school for it? How did you get trained? Did you get self-trained or reading books? Or how did you get the, the knowledge to acquire to do all those things? Yeah, I think if it's like this. You know, it's very similar sports. You either got it or you don't. And then you got to refine it. Mm -hmm. So the refinement for me was, you know, I had a good education, you know, and I had a crazy vocabulary. And I was also <laughs> that guy that, you know, everybody in the room couldn't wait to hear my story. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? And, and so that just kind of added on and added on. But, um, you know, study your craft. You know, again, like the weekends, I mean, I was I was watching movies, looking, you know, always studying the the quote unquote greats, you know, like, right. hey, you know, what? how did they get there, da, da, da. So I had, you know, this, you know, um, this repertoire where I could just draw from all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, like, read scripts or or watch movies, and you kind of like make notes on certain type of uh, plot points and er yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like things that you know throw you for a loop. Like, oh, like used to everybody, you know, I could predict this. You know, hence the butler did it. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so just being able to fool the audience and keep them on their feet was always a like. You know, you you did a film with me, Murder Book, mm -hmm. which is now being rebranded as The Squad Two. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, you know, so it, that was a who done it, you know, and that was my, you know, my take on that one, you know. So every, you know, every every film was different for me. It just, you know, I in this unless I go back to the well, hey, we're gonna redo this one, which we'll do it with trap plane, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and trap planes, you know, you know, award winning ep, uh, web uh, web series. When you was filming, did you realize that you know you might have something special there? When did it hit you? When like, hey, this could really go far for me. I think it hit me when when it was moving so fast. Because, like, you talk about making movies. A film can take mm. years yeah. to get off the ground. Like, my first one, years to, to edit. Yeah. Years to get out there. Trap Plane, is this, is this real? It was November 2015. I'm sitting with my buddies. I come up with the idea. Mind you, I already had a Murder Book, and I hadn't released Murder Book. You know, but this is how I think. I think differently. You know, most people be like, oh, man, I got to get this work off. I got to go put, no. I said, hold on, I'll hold that work. I'll make new work. Boom. So I come back with Trap Plane, and everybody was loving it. The first thing I did was grab the main character, the the charismatic uh, drug dealer. Mm -hmm. He was a friend of mine, and he said, hey, I'm in. And then there was people who were following me, and then I, I got some investors in it, and these accountants gave me a little bit of money to, you know, do the film. So, hey, we just started doing it. I mean, you know, I started off with fifteen thousand dollars on that, and it looks like I spent millions. <laughs> I mean, the plane we had was a fifty million dollar plane. Man, that was amazing. You know, uh, and then the talent level that just kept coming in—it was great. It was—it was such amazing energy. So, you know, that's November twenty sixteen. I start writing, 
We go into production by March of 2016. And when did I know it was good? I mean, like, what, the energy on the set mm -hmm. was great, you know. Um, and then afterwards, when we were editing, we just kind of knew we had something special. Mm -hmm. We knew we did. We didn't know how the world was going to receive it. We didn't know how, how fast it was going to take off, where it was going to go. And then we started uh, applying to some different, you know, film festivals and whatnot and started winning, you know, little awards here. And then we got accepted for uh, the New York New York City Web Fest, mm -hmm. which is international, thousands of entries on each category. And um, I'll never forget, like, we had a meeting with this guy. I'm not going to say his name, but, you know, we're still cool. But it was a very disappointing meeting, you know, because he, he's an industry veteran. And I thought he was going to, you know, say, hey, man, I want to walk you in here, do this. And, you know, his, his response to us was, um, you know, the uh, submit to festivals, put it on uh, what's uh, iTunes, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. All right, great, thanks. Anyways, that same day, you know, we're, we're all hanging out, you know, talking about, eh, blow it off. And then that next morning, we got accepted to the New York Web, uh, City Web Fest. Mm -hmm. So we're at, you know, NYC Web Fest. Within two months, we're, you know, we're at this premiere in New York, electric. Dave Chappelle is hosting SNL. <laughs> Colin McGregor is fighting. Trump just won. <laughs> New York is on fire. <laughs> It is on fire. <laughs> and we are there for the, you know, NYC Web Fest. Yeah. And we're there to win. And we're 20 deep. I mean, I had extras come. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I saw the video. It, it, it was full. You felt, it felt like it was like a, a Source Awards uh, rap, <laughs> a rapper out there. Everybody, yeah, y'all had the whole stage covered when y'all yeah. won. And so subscribe how the, how the feeling was when you heard that name. Was you oh, shocked man. or was you? You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I was, I was, I, I did, you know, you know, and then people were like, man, they realized how bad we wanted this. And then like, yeah, you know, you're there, you know, you're looking at the other ones. Ah, oh, it's good. You know, and you just don't know. I mean, it's also New York, Houston dichotomy. You know, New York doesn't like Houston. You know, everybody's got their perception of us. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. And, you know, when I made Trap Plane, you know, I wanted people to think, you know, it's like, can you make Trap Plane? Everybody says, they'll say Soul Plane or they'll say, you know, the Trap, this, the, you know, the combination mm -hmm. is to make you think. And then the first thought is, hey, this is going to be ignorant. This is going to be some, you know, low budget, stupid, you know, thing, whatever. Anyways, when we got accepted to NYC Web Fest, you know they don't like us. Anybody can win in your backyard. Like, mm -hmm. you know, nothing against these filmmakers or local that always win at World Fest. But, you know, anybody can win in your backyard. And there's nothing wrong with it, you know. But you go to that next level, you got to, you know yourself, you can't, you got to beat the bully down the street. Yeah, you know, yeah, no yeah. one's going to, you can't, can't keep beating up your family. Come on. Mm -hmm. You know, so you go, <laughs> that's what we did. And, then, you know, when we, and when we won, oh, man, it was just like electric, man. Like it was, <clears throat> they say, you know, when you break the internet, like we broke the internet that day. You know, we had a little, little moment with it and then getting on Amazon, you mm -hmm. know, just like the streams to it and all, you know, and it was, it just, it just got so much. I mean, my buddy goes, bro. We got three years of prom of uh, promotion off trap lane. <laughs> man, hey, when I saw that, man, I, man, I got you know that feeling you know, when when your name got called and I got drafted. Yeah. That was that feeling I yeah. saw through you, and I was just just fired up to see that emotion. When when um from from what you learned from trap lane and the production and development, what do you what will you take to this new project, the squad? Well, all of that, man, the the squad, like people around me, sometimes, you know, you know yourself, it's that development is natural. You're getting mm -hmm. it, you're getting it. You know, you might not, you know, notice in yourself, but other people notice it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got on this one. People were just like, man, you just, you know, you had it on this one. It was just the control and everything, you know, the way you switched pace, boom, boom. Because when you write, direct, and act, you got to have people around you you trust. Mm -hmm. And I work with different cinematographers, you know, the DP, the director of photography, that's the person who, you know, uh, gets behind the camera and, and they're the director of the shot. I don't have time to, like, stand over you, hey, hey Mike, can you frame this better? Can you, you know, hey, man, if you got to do that, you're never going to finish. Mm -hmm. you got to trust that person and know that they know what they're doing. In addition to that, how fast do you work? You know, trusting with the light. There's a lot of things that go into this game. And, I, and, I, and a lot of first-time filmmakers, they make first-time filmmaker mistakes. mistakes. Yeah. You know, so, like, you know, when, it, when people want to work with me, I mean, you know, this, this package is uh, this package. I'm not, you know, I don't dilute it. This is what you're going to get. And we're going to, we're going to take you there. But, you know, I don't, I don't have, you know, other, other quote unquote, let's say chefs in the kitchen. You know, this, this is my, you know, my masterpiece and everybody here's got your, your chef hat and you're working under me and that's mm -hmm. how it's going to work. 
and we're going to respect each other and we're going to move at the pace we need to and we're going to communicate and listen to each other and that's it it's going to move you know yeah. and that's what we did on this one man and it, it was it was just you know there was days i woke up on that set i mean just you know going and i was like it was like like living the dream bro oh, it was living amazing. the dream that's amazing what what challenges you faced early on in your career that you you address as soon as you start getting on the set uh, you know, I think you the battle's won before it's uh, it's fought. You know, so in in this case, it's making sure you have the right people, mm -hmm. and understanding the day that you're going into. Hey, these are going to be my challenges for this day. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to get this done, but I know these will be the challenges and the obstacles. Thinking on the fly, being a mover, because like you know, one day we 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 couldn't get a location, and I have to think to myself, is this scene so crucial that it's going to take from the next of the day? And I said, you know what? We can literally move on the story without that scene. And sometimes, hey man, it's just like when you got to cut a player, you got to, mm -hmm. you know, you got to fire a, a, uh, an agent. You know, <laughs> you know what yeah, time it is. Yeah, it's I just did, like, yeah, I fired a couple of them. <laughs> you know, so you see, you know, that it's that ability to think on your feet. Mm -hmm. You know, and that that's what's going to help you. And then that's why the experience. You know, my first go around, man. You know, it was, I was, I was, I would say I was too nice, but I, I mean, I, 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 for a first time director, I did really good. But every time, I got sharper and sharper. And uh, there was one project where, you know, I really, that, that, I took a break after that project because I had some cancerous people on the set. And, you know, now going forward, I'm very, you know, how I weed them out or just know, hey, you're just here for that day. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just going to do this because you can't be here every day because you're not going to be able to handle what we go through because it's not always glamorous. It's not, you know, there's a lot of work. This is work. Yeah. You know, and you got, you got to really love it. And, you know, if you got into this business for the money and the fame, man, and the fame, <laughs> like you're just you know, you're you're man, you're you're gonna be a one percenter if you make it. Because that's not what this business is about. It's not. It's really it's a competition to 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 put your art out there and be and, and see how it's received and, and 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 find find your fulfillment from it and, and make an and, you know, what how does the audience is it do they like this? Is this is worth you pursuing? Does it make you feel good? Mm -hmm. You know, if if you're just about you know likes and followers and you know and uh, just you know people the the celeb of it all. I mean, man, you, you, I don't know. I don't know what that's like. That's just never been me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the guys I work with, like you know, big time actors, they 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 feel the same way. And like you know, now I get a chance to talk with them on this this new film. I worked with Robert Lazardo, and he's another Danny Trejo, another you know just the bad guy. Yeah, you know, always. Yeah. You know, Bill is, hey, he's going to, you know, this guy is is going to play this kind of character. So with me, you know, I'll try to make that character more dynamic, you know, more fun. And that, it was a lot of fun working with him, man. <laughs> man, that's, that's what's up. That's amazing, man. That's it, And also just to, to put something that's in your mind, put it on paper and put and project it out there. And it's just a, a amazing transition. When you was coming up and you want to take film more serious, was it one director or producer you kind of like idolized and just kind of like, you know, he's the person I, I, I idolize and I want to, you know, uh, like see in the work he made? Is this something you kind of like pick from? Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's like, you know, you got to study the, the players that you like. You know, for me, um, it was Martin Scorsese. Watched all his films when I was real young. And like that was, you know, that was – to me, like I wanted to be the Latino Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Then then Tarantino came. Mm-hmm. When Pulp Fiction dropped. <laughs> Game changer. <laughs> I'll never forget leaving that theater. Yeah. Like that just was like, whoa, I gotta step my game up. You know? <laughs> Cause honestly, it was just how he how dangerous he was with the pen. What he wrote was just wow. And how he framed it. Cause it seemed like he framed it all together and everybody would like know what happens at the very end because it, it, it the way he structured it was was amazing yeah i mean it, it it's his masterpiece you know i mean in my personal opinion none of his other films have, have gotten to that and and then there's nothing wrong with that you know oh no you're, you you're you're trying to chase yourself yeah 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 you know well yeah he um again you know with that film it was just keeping people off pace the characters i mean and having access to everything he had, like if you put like, there's people who have access to this mic, and you know, you and me both know, mm -hmm. you know, you just, you know, man made the money, money never made the man, right? Yeah. So these guys got access to the money, and they just can't do it, you know. Mm -hmm. as, as as the story goes, I mean, I heard Tarantino one time sleeping on couches, you know, just really, you know, 
living that life to to get to that that point, you know. So he, when he got when he finally got it, he was ready. And he wrote uh, was it Natural Born Killers, mm-hmm. and Oliver Stone directed it. So these guys had to work their way up there. Me, I went a different route. I mean, I literally controlled all my stuff from the beginning and just been getting better and better. That, that's amazing. That's amazing. So I'm going to transition to to some some football. Um, Die hard Packers fan. Oh yeah. So let's. Uh, I got a little question. So G, if you let's play GM. So who would you take to starting quarterback, Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers, and why? Okay, so you know they're two. They're both. I mean, you can't go wrong with either one. And I think it's it's just to have access to either one, you're you're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking about Brett Favre in his prime mm-hmm. and Aaron Rodgers in his prime. I'm going to say this. Aaron Rodgers is a more intelligent quarterback. Brett Favre had a little bit better of an arm. And then running athletic ability, Aaron Rodgers just a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And then you team it's a team sport. Who plays better with the team? Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I'm going to go Aaron Rodgers on that. I'm going to go Aaron Rodgers on it. I think uh, Aaron Rodgers just hasn't had the, the players around him. The Packers should have, in my opinion, five Super Bowls by now. Yeah, I think defense. If he if they would have st- structured the defense and kept the defense, because when we had top five defense, they won a Super Bowl. You start getting rid of great players, and and you know defense wins championships. You need somebody to stop somebody. Right, right. And the, you know when I left, you know Woodson was there for a little while. Then he gone. Then Peppers. Then Clay. Then they just got rid of all the good players that was defensive minded and. He kind of fell off, but let me jump to this one. All right, Reggie White or Clay Matthews? I'm going to go say, that, again, you know, when they came to the Packers, they were both different stages of their career. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> Reggie White was the beast of beasts <laughs> when he was an eagle. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to collect cards. I remember like that Reggie White card where he's just sitting on the, on the, on the, on the bench and like, you just like, whoa, you don't want to meet that guy. And Man. he's the nicest person ever. The, you know, well, Danny Trail, nicest person ever, you know, this, it, it's weird how they got that, you know, that, that look and that dichotomy, uh-huh. you know, but I guess when you, when you look like that, nobody wants to, wants to try you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody sees me and they'd be like, they were like, and then I'm like, hey, how's it going? They were yeah. like, oh, okay, I caught you off guard, but but no, nah, no, nah, I I say that. So so Reggie White, you take Reggie. White? So yeah, you know, um, again, I think over the course of their careers, Reggie White just you know, he's a monster. It's a monster, and just you know, you know, if I if I could draft, who would I draft? Mm-hmm. I draft Reggie White. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of times, you know, especially as edge rushers, you can only do your fastball. So many times you got to be able to hunker down at the point of attack, make the offensive line sit, then make a move. Uh, you know, okay, I saw Clay Matthews take over a game, and that was the Super Bowl when he caught when he forced that, that fumble, fumble. Yeah, that is what made him a Packer. It, to be a <laughs> Packer legend, it only takes one play. Yeah, because because <laughs> to cut you off, he broke the sack record of uh, uh, Kabir Bajamela and Reggie Reggie White. So Clay Matthews broke the sack work at all yeah. times, but he spent most of the time there. So that, well, that, that's the thing. Had, Red, had Reggie been drafted by the Packers, and, and you know, mm-hmm. he, he'd own every record. You know? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, mean, you're right. I, I remember the Reggie White story. I remember watching him against, uh, I want to say it was the Broncos. And Brett Favre was having a subpar game, man, subpar game. Reggie White sacked, I want to say, John Elway like two or three times in a row. <laughs> Literally, I mean, the, the – uh, Won the game, you yeah. know. When you talk about like a deep, like you know, he literally won the game. Because I would study him when I was at, at, at the Packers, and he had this one move. He would either run by you, or he had this amazing hump move that he would just knock people out the way. And I was like, man, I don't, I don't think I'm that strong to do that move because yeah. this dude had to be extremely fast and extremely strong. And he was like the total player that that had everything. All right, what about? Donald Driver or Devontae Adams? So, okay, Donald Driver, I think he's, you know, he's a player that benefited from, he played with Favre, right, and, mm-hmm. and Aaron Rodgers, definitely benefited from that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Devontae Adams is a game changer. 
he really is like we, you know we have a saying in Green Bay none of these wide receivers can make it without you know without our quarterback and, mm-hmm. and it's been proven you really you know you look at the statistics can you name one one wide receiver that has left and had mm-hmm. success yeah I heard Greg Jennings talk about it in another podcast talk about the the he will throw you open versus you have yeah. to be open to get throw. So. And, and I've been telling people with this uh, Odell Beckham uh, 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 Jr. thing, like, you know, horrible mistake what he just did because he got a one-year contract, mm-hmm. okay? And when it doesn't work out for him, he just lowered his value massively. Mm-hmm. To have a chance to play with Aaron Rodgers, you, you're getting money from Cleveland. You know, this is, this is when players, you know, self-destruct. I mean, listen, just to come into Green Bay, chill, Take it easy when it's like, you know, Aaron Rodgers is going to hit you. He's, He's a gonna, precision passer. And, mm. and and not only that, it's just going to be Devontae and him. Yeah. And not only that, you know, and he has the whole offseason to party. And he has money. He can fly anybody up or do. You know, I tell you, like, that's that's just like he just showed the kind of player he is. And, and you know, I was hoping he was going to make the right choice. I, I knew he would. You know, and uh, and I tell you, like I don't know him personally. I don't, you know, have anything to say about him. But I mean, you just you just look at you like some players want to win, some don't, and uh, that's just the reality of it. But getting back to the question, I would take Devonte over Donald for sure, but I would take Sterling Sharp over both of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good good one. Sterling Sharp. I mean, even Shannon said Sterling was the best in the family. You know, in in that throw from. Favre to um, Sterling to beat the the Lions in the playoffs. That is when Green Bay officially became a winner again, mm-hmm. and that was Sterling. He he you know he had speed, power, hands. I mean it was it was just a freak accident. We had the neck injury, but if you look at his statistics and where he was going, and also get this, he was the only first round draft pick wide receiver the Packers had, had ever really taken. Okay. Yeah, Sterling was like an eight or nine pick from South Carolina. Oh man! So, I'm, so imagine had you know the Packers took. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I support Aaron Rodgers on this completely. So people, you know, who, who want to you know knock him, listen, put put Tom Brady in Green Bay, he'd be gone. Mm-hmm. And and you, the funny thing you mentioned that because I, I listened to Sterling Sharp and uh, Shannon Sharp interview, and he talked and oh his Hall of Fame speech, and he mentioned how. You know, his brother deserves to be in there. For the short amount of time he played, his statistics, his first, I think, six years, seven yeah, years, yeah. his first seven years was 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 balling. If, if Chris Carter is in the Hall of Fame, Sterling Sharp should be in the Hall of Fame. And here's why. Almost identical players, Sterling was, you know, one, I'd say, speed above him. They went back and forth when they mm-hmm. remember it was the, the, every, the, every year someone set the new uh, most catches in the season record. Yeah, Sterling had it, and Chris Carter had it. You know, it, it's like if Chris Carter's in the Hall of Fame, Sterling should be in the Hall of Fame. Per, I hundred percent agree. With and you, I remember you spoke about David Chappelle with the whole cancer culture and what's going on around his comedy special. Is do you think the media and fan, and people is just just getting too sensitive about comedy these days? Or do you do you think do they have a right to I, to come out? Yeah, I think that's it's more the fact that they don't have the right because it, I watched it. He literally is talking good. I mean, what you can't you can't I can't make fun of the stain on your shirt, you know? I, I can't tell you you got some you know ho- some holes in your Adidas. I mean, come on, man! Like, what, what what where are we at? You know, like I mean, like I mean, I grew up in an era, man. Like, the, my girl cousins, Mike, what? Just tear me apart, man. Yeah, the way the way they would make fun of me, like you know, man, they get they would get canceled right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, because because I think about it, you grow up and everybody gets made fun of. I don't know anybody that doesn't. And and like I said, you know, I watch a special. He really didn't. And and, and the thing about comedy that I don't, I, I think a lot of people don't take from is the intent. If he comes off in a in a comedic way and he's trying to make. People laugh, think, and laugh. Go ahead, but he's not going out trying to bash. Yeah, yeah. At you people. know, there, there's an agenda here to to basically say, you know, program the way we think to say this is off limits, 
and you know, and comedy is about nothing being off limits. You look at Richard Pryor; mm -hmm. he's telling you, "Man, I grew up in a brothel. <laughs> My first sexual experience was with a prostitute." <laughs> wow, like you know, it, you know, to to have the 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 comfort to be able to to turn your pain mm -hmm. into somebody's laughter. You know, that was what, you know, was the magic of comedy. And now it's like, oh, no, I can't talk about my gay aunt. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I got, I got an aunt that's gay. One of, here's a funny story. We and my cousin were walking to play basketball, you know, and he's, he's like, you, he goes, you know, you know, you know my mother's gay, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we just started laughing. We all knew, you know, but it's yeah. like, that, that's the kind of shit. Oh, we can't talk about this? Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree. It's just things are just getting a little too sensitive. And honestly, I don't think, I don't think, you know, people have a problem with but I think it's the higher agenda behind it it's just I don't know I don't want to get too um, um, uh, behind it but I think it's something bigger than 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 what what people say absolutely you know it's uh, you know I, I graduated from the University of Wisconsin Madison and uh, my degree is in history and I could I honestly feel like I could ball it up and throw it away, <laughs> you know, because like I've learned way more because I, I, I research stuff. I do my own. You know, it's one thing about me is like we can have a conversation and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to you. but I'm going to do my own my own research. On and you could say something to me like there's no way that's true. But I'll just say, hey, you know, let me go look at it for myself. Yeah, because a lot of people, everything they've been taught in school, they said, well, no, they taught me that in school. So there's no way there's no way you can. You know, man, they don't think for themselves, and that, that, that that's where we're at right now. And they know that whoever mm -hmm. they are, yeah. you know, they know that, and so they're they're pushing that on us and say, you can't think that way. This is this or this, mm -hmm. and and it's getting shown you know, and proven out here that you know you got to question the answers. You can't just trust everything they're telling you. Think for yourself because yeah. you know nobody cares about you more than who you you exactly. And that's one thing I, I just kind of comes out. Percepts the media perception is is what things go for, what people go for now. And it's just sometimes people are controlled by it. And and it's just sad to see, you know, how things are these days with the media and perception of who you are, who you're supposed to be. And, and everybody needs to just let them be who they are. And instead of right or wrong, just just be and, and be yourself. Yeah, well, and have a right to your opinion. Your opinion. You know, what, that's, you're censoring opinions? Mm-hmm. This is, you know, it's just crazy, you know, and... uh. I, I always laugh, man. Like my, my mother wrote a book about bullying, and I was like, "My, I got bullied," you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, until you beat up the bully, the bullying don't stop. Like, yeah. where was that? Where was that chapter, mom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. I never got bullied, but I, <laughs> yeah, I came out the I, womb. I, I only they made a bully that big. <laughs> <laughs> I came out the womb six feet, so <laughs> yeah, I didn't have that problem. But. Uh, like I said, you know, everybody had it, and and I think it just makes people stronger, you know. I think if people are too sheltered and never experienced anything. Big time. It, you know, they just, it just comes out weak. But. Um, it, it doesn't, you, you don't grow, you know. You, you got to have adversity to grow, and, you know, you, 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 you know, you. It, you know, it takes a village, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the it's only the village idiots teaching mm -hmm. the kids. And right now we got. A village on fluoride, you know, mm -hmm. deficient in the brains, can't give you, you know, real information. And, uh, you know, for me, it's it's important to to make sure that who's ever coming after me, that, you know, they're, they're going to take it to, to where, you know, further than I did or and, and respect where I took it to. Because, I you know, I made some moves. I did some things. And, I you know, I didn't just do it for myself. I kept the door open for other people to come after me, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what it's about. You know, I was helped by a lot of people. And when you find out when you get on that level, a lot of these guys want to help people, but... There's just there's so many people that want it for the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. so it, it, it's hard, you know. It, it's a it's a it's a balance because you see, okay, you see these celebrities, you see like, why won't they talk to me? Why won't they, you know? It's man, it, it it you you have to be protective of your time, mm -hmm. you know, and that and that's I enjoy my my, my couch time relaxing, you know. <laughs> I I don't need to spend it on you know you know mentoring the wrong people, but I got people that I mentor and I help, and I love to see them succeed in their own way because. I can't be them. They can't be me. But they find their their avenue for success. Mm -hmm. They find their niche that they're that they're good at. Exactly. And the thing that stuck out with what you said adversity, and that's one thing I kind of want. I like to develop the show because you know everybody goes through challenges. You know, and how you handle it is how what makes you stronger. You know, because you can either you know step back or let it defeat you or keep moving forward. And that's why I always say undefeated because you know it's not just you know. A podcast, but it's a way of thinking. You know, everybody goes through problems, but the ability to get back up and keep going 
is is a is a statement that uh, needs to push through. But uh, with that being said, you know, let's let's go tr- uh, transition. Uh, I know I'm, sh- I'm sure you've seen uh, the Netflix Colin Kaepernick's this, this situation. Yeah. Does Colin Kaepernick have the right to compare the NFL draft to slavery? Right. So, <laughs> again, opinions. He's entitled to his opinion. Mm-hmm. Now, here's my opinion on his opinion. Okay. So, no. And here's why. Slavery means you are not getting paid. <laughs> Let's just start there. Okay, now if he had said indentured servitude, that would be a more intelligent statement. Mm-hmm. But it's, you know, it, you know, it's like this extreme, like you know, with it, so uh, back to Chappelle, like you know, he he never, you know, you know, his statements were not homophobic. It was he was telling a story about. You know him and his relationships with, with you know, with with those types of people, and you know, uh, and 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 how he navigated it. Mm-hmm. Kaepernick is coming out, and he has been, you know, incredibly uh, blessed to have his life and his athletic ability. Extremely successful, played over ten years, made over sixty million dollars of a sport that he calls a slavery. Continue. Yeah, you know, and it, man, I I feel like he could be doing more if he thought for himself because he's become a pawn for that for that agenda, and that agenda, you know, I could I could speak on it more. It that agenda was really put in place to hold black people back, and it goes back to W. E. Debose. It goes back to uh, 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 what's his name, uh, Washington. Oh. Uh- Washington football. Grover, Grover, watch, uh, uh, peanut guy. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, the receiver? No, no, no. no the, um, I think, yeah, is, is it Grover Washington? George Washington Carver. That's it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So these guys were the Kaepernicks of their time, and their job was to program uh, blacks in America to think a certain way, accept a certain thing, and go a certain narrative. That's all he's doing. He's not telling, he's not thinking for himself. He's told something, and he goes there. And this gets back to what I'm saying about the information. He, he, he thinks he's right because he's going by what he's been taught, and he's really not thinking for himself. I mean, even the Black Panthers, they, they were literally, there was um, uh, COINTELPRO in them. You know, the government had infiltrated them and literally is, is, is pushing them a direction that is going to cause self-destruction. Oh, okay. You see, and that's what turned into the drug, the war on drugs, and you know how how that whole movement got destroyed. Those guys turned into drug dealers and turned into drug addicts, mm-hmm. and it was all done from internally and how they make them self destruct. They take these leaders, they you know they give them a little, they give them a little carrot, mm-hmm. you know, and then get them to go in this direction, and then and then you get you got what happened, the destruction of of a lot of, of black families in this time period. Yeah. You look at look at how Black America was in the forties, fifties, in the sixties, and then you look at where it went into the eighties. Mm-hmm. What what went wrong? Yeah, exactly. I I I, I asked a similar question. I interviewed um, Ahmad Green uh, last week, and I asked a similar question, and we had the back and forth about it. You know, he believed, and I said, look, I I believe like when it comes to measurements and height, yeah, but it just it doesn't go past that. You know, there's they're getting paid to do it. They didn't come there on ships. <laughs> you know, they came on first class flights. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they're getting paid a lot of money. And the thing about, you know, comparing it to slavery, um, you don't have to play football. So, you know, people that was back then, they had to do that or they well, were going to die. And, and it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. You literally, they take you and another, you're, you're forced to breed. Like it goes on and on and on and on. Mm hmm. Like literally, there's no comparison. Mm-hmm. You're forced to live here. He's, you know, what is he talking about? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's I, and and like you said, you know, somebody wrote those words on on in, on the it, screenplay. It's, it's and like you this. Read he's, them, so he's got the agenda. They're they're feeding him the script, and how I mean, how else is he having this lifestyle without playing football? Why is he getting these contracts when he's not that popular? You know. Why is MTV, you know, you know, if you look at the, the narrative, his monopolies of our media, why are they putting him up there? How is he, you know, I think he's been canceled by intelligent people, yeah. you know, 
the media can only cancel the dummies, you know, that, that think they can be, I, I, you can't cancel me. You know, I'll just, I'll just keep coming at you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and all, all, and all that, you know, I think he does some good things. It's just, you know, a lot of the things he do is, you know, a little extreme, like some of the things, some of the things he say, but I, I do believe a lot of things he, he, he comes with good gestures and, and good intent, but some things go, you know, st certain statements just go a little too extreme and people just hang on every word. And like you said, you know, they don't think for themselves because think about it. Yeah. NFL players, I, I can tell you right now, when they first heard that, they were like, this is crazy. I'm, I'm you know, all, all my, he's uh, doing is my, it, my it's million dollar home. You know, slaves don't go to a million dollar home. So. They, 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 and they don't date white women. They don't have the, the you know, all this stuff goes on and on that, yeah. you know, Let's, let's be honest. Yeah. Like let's let's really get honest here. Like let's look at this, mm -hmm. you know. And that's what they don't want. And unfortunately, man, you know, you know, Colin stuff. He he's a you know he's born in Milwaukee. You know, he's adopted. Uh, grew up a big Packer fan. And you know, like I said, man, I I was you know I was pulling for Cap. You know, I really wanted him to, to get together. But it's obvious, man. It's it's obvious when you become a pawn. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, man. Well, definitely appreciate you coming in, man. And anything you want to. You want to um, uh, send a shout out to support or anything like that? Or? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I want you guys to uh, follow us at uh, You Got Films. That's E U G O T Entertainment. You got to have You Got Films. That's my uh, Instagram on uh, Facebook. I'm uh, Juan C. Vasquez, V A Z Q U E Z. Money Mike's been a couple of my projects. We got some more coming. Uh, look out for The Squad. The Squad's my new film. We'll be dropping that sometime next year. If you got Amazon, I got three films on Amazon. You can check out Trap Plane. That's the one that won Best Drama at NYC Web Fest. Uh, we got Through the Valley, which has Danny Trejo, Noel G, uh, Samantha Stebbon, a really good film. That one's about a political activist trying to save his community and while reaching out to his brother. Uh, he gets accused of murder, um, and then he gets a public defender. So it's, it's a really, it's a really uh, captivating story. That one's called Through the Valley. Uh, and then I have Sponsors. That's another web series. That one is about these women that are, that are entrepreneurs and you know trying to find rich men and and figure out life and whatnot. So that, that's, a, that's a fun one, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's and then, of course, The Squad is coming out next year. That one is uh, based on a true story. Mm -hmm. So The, the Squad, um, it's, uh, it, it, it's probably my second passion piece mm -hmm. because my first film definitely would not have gotten made. You know, Hollywood would have never made my first film, mm -hmm. never made it. This one here is me pulling the trigger um, on something that's saying, hey, you know, I'm tired of everybody playing us, so we're going to play ourselves, mm -hmm. for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. So the, the Chicano squad really existed. So from 1979 to 2010, Houston, Texas, had a dedicated Mexican-American detective squad. Oh, wow. Homicide squad, you know. These, so they weren't just the patrol guys. Mm -hmm. They were literally, you know, it's a different economy. And, and so in 79, Houston was the murder capital of America. It was us and Detroit. Meanwhile, you got this boom town with oil and gas. People don't know how how dangerous Houston. Yeah, because Houston's yeah. such a nice city. But it, you know, we, we got our ups and downs. Right now, we're we're what you know uh, gentrified. Want, yeah, we're gentrified, <laughs> but they're definitely you know we got a lot of a lot of heat on the street right now with just you know I, I would say the economy and then just elements of people you know and a lot of violent criminals out there. So you got lack of opportunity and that you know what's going to happen. I think that was a similar time period. So it's, it's kind of ironic that, you know, I'm doing this film right now. But um, they literally, you know, they solved 80% of their murders. Like they just, you know, they, they it was a really successful thing. And then at the same time, you see like Training Day. Training Day was written for a Latino. Oh. I mean, how can you argue with Denzel, right? Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, I, 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 I get that part of the point, man. I, if, you know, I would let Denzel probably get it too. I would. <laughs> yeah, Denzel, Denzel get a lot of any role you know, he won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, and, and on this level, I was like, okay, well, I got five detectives, and I just, you know, I, I, I found the, you know, the actors that I thought could make it work. And, uh, man, we just tell a really good story, and I think people are going to be really proud of it because, uh, you know, there, there was ups and downs, and I think I do a good job of, of, uh, of being fair to the story. Mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, look for that, The Squad. Uh, it's called The Squad, Rise of the Chicano Squad. We'll be dropping that one next year. Okay, perfect. Where can, where can people follow you on social media? Uh, at You Got Films, E-U-G-O-T Films. Okay, perfect, perfect. Well, thanks again. I really appreciate that. Hey, for everybody that's listening, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. Make sure you follow, follow one. He's doing some really great things. Hey, remember... 
Undefeated is not just a podcast, but it's a mindset. Whatever you're going through you know, in life is not what happens to you, but it's how you handle it. Undefeated. Undefeated.